Let's talk about bringing your photo into Picverse. When you open up Picverse, you can either drag and drop your photo directly onto the main page or click the Browse for Image button. Easy! Your photo is ready to begin editing. With your photo in place, you should notice the toolbar to the right side of the display window is activated and ready for your creativity. Now, because photos are so unique and most people have their own idea of what they prefer in their thumbnail, I will keep this super simple and go over just a few of the basic tools that I use the most. For step one, I like to begin by using the adjustment tool. This will be located at the top of the icons on the right side of the toolbar. Once selected, the icon will be highlighted for your convenience. The adjust tab enables you to adjust the colors, brightness, and much more. For a headshot like this, I usually come down to the lighting section and increase the brightness slightly. This is done by clicking and dragging the brightness adjustment bar. After brightness, I move on to the color section and give myself a little tan by again clicking and dragging the saturation adjustment bar. Let's move on to removing the background. To enter the change background setting, you will need to select the checkered icon, which is the fourth icon down from the top of the column. There are a few ways to go about removing the background, but what I have found to work best for me is clicking on the auto select button. By clicking auto select, you will now have removed most of the background. The second step in the background removal process is to click the Object Selection Brush, located on the top side of the toolbar. With this tool selected, we can fix any spots that we want to keep, including any spots that have been accidentally erased by applying the Auto Select feature. Just keep in mind, the Auto Select tool is never perfect. Okay, now the real editing begins. To get as precise as possible, you will need to zoom in on the object you would like to keep. This can be accomplished by hovering your cursor over the object you would like to keep and rolling forward the wheel on your computer mouse. If you are editing without a mouse, or perhaps do not have a wheel on your mouse, I would strongly suggest getting one, as this will make your editing much easier in the future. As a second option, you can also zoom in via hotkeys, which are Control plus or Control minus. As a third option, you can also use the zoom feature to the bottom left of the display window. After zooming in, you can begin carefully carving out your object with your brush tool. Remember, you can also adjust your brush size and softness by using the slider bars available on the tool menu. If you have anything you want to remove from your photo that the auto select feature missed, you can use the background selection tool by selecting the brush icon located on the top right of the toolbar. Once finished, click next step. This brings us to the third and final step in the background removal process. Now here you can either keep your image with a transparent background, change the color of it, or upload a new background that you would like to use behind your object. If you notice any spots of your foreground or object that need touching up, you can click this little arrow up at the top left of the display window, and you will be taken back to the previous step where you can make further corrections. Before completing step three, be sure to move Move your foreground object or image to its final position. Okay, that's it for background. Now let's move on to the smiley face icon, which is the retouching tool. With this tool, you will notice a great variety of options. There are two options that I use commonly, and those are skin smoothing and eye color. When using the tools, experiment by adjusting the brush size and intensity using the slider bars provided for each option. Don't forget to zoom in. Zooming in will make things much easier for you. Next, let's discuss the crop icon. This tool allows you to adjust the image aspect ratio. For a YouTube thumbnail, YouTube recommends an aspect ratio of 16-9. Great news! 16-9 aspect ratio is a preset option that you can click on by using the drop-down menu under Preset Sizes. Too easy! The next icon you will need to visit is the Resize icon. This tool enables you to resize the pixel width and height. YouTube recommends 1280 by 720, but for better image quality, consider using 1920 by 1080. Neither of these sizes are currently listed in the preset option drop-down menu. Fortunately, Picverse makes this very easy to adjust. Simply click in the designated boxes, type in the sizes you would like, and click apply. Last but not least, it's time to go over the text tool. The text tool icon has a upper and lowercase t on it, and it can be found at the bottom of the tool column. The text tool allows you to add creative text to your thumbnail. 
Start by clicking Add Text. Immediately, you will notice a text box pop up. In this box, you can type in the wording of your choice. When you're finished, proceed by clicking OK. You can rotate, enlarge, and shrink the text by using the pink arrow icon. To move the text around, simply click on the text and drag it where you would like to place it. Now, to edit the look of the text, be sure to first click on the text image, then you can come over to the tool menu and change the font style, size, and color. You can also play around with outlines, backgrounds, and warps. Now, I would suggest using a very easy to read font and use a minimal amount of words in your thumbnail. Once you are satisfied with the look of your text and the overall look of your thumbnail, be sure to save your work by clicking on the save icon in the top right corner. Once you have selected the save icon, give your thumbnail a name and save in your preferred file type. For the file type options available in the drop-down menu, YouTube recommends a PNG or JPEG be used. Click save and your thumbnail is done and ready to be uploaded to YouTube. I would suggest uploading it to YouTube to see if you like the look of it. If you decide there is something you don't like, feel free to open Pickverse back up and continue editing it. Your image will still be where you left it. Thanks for hanging out with me this far into the video. Now as promised, let's go over a super easy way to find unlimited thumbnail ideas. Start by opening up your browser and type in google.com forward slash images. In the search bar, just key in any subject that you need ideas for. For this example, I'll be searching for new creative facial expressions. So I'll type in creative facial expressions and click search. Now look through the options and try to find an image that best illustrates what it is you're looking for and give it a click. Once you have done this, you will notice that off to the right side of the page, Google will give a list of related images. Click on show more and just like that, hundreds of fantastic thumbnail ideas.